With great power comes great responsibility. Today I'm going to show you how to convert the entire NES Classic setup to that of the SNES Classic and vice versa. This is a very powerful method and I'm going to do my best to streamline the steps that are involved as far as doing it safely so that you do not mess your own personal setup up. This is my original NES Classic setup throughout the last year. And I have an amalgamation of many, many different systems from Sega CD as you can see here. I start out with Atari 2600 and I have a designated prefix system that I follow to keep things nice and organized where I do the little system type and then a semicolon and a space and I do this right down the line from Atari 2600 to a arcade games, Commodore 64, CPC Amstrad, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, I mean all the way down the line for pretty much uh, several dozen systems even PlayStation 1. Anyways, I'm gonna take this setup and I'm gonna convert it over over to the NES SNES Classic today. So I'm gonna open up my new hashi directory. And for reference, all the games that you have on the NES Classic are stored within the games directory. All the games for the SNES Classic are stored in the SNES games folder. So games for NES Classic, games underscore SNES for the SNES Classic. Now I'm going to open up Hashi, and I'd recommend having your system powered off when you do this because there's a script in place that will actually auto-detect your system and pretty much go to that configuration for it from the get-go. So I have my system powered off right now. If you go into the settings, console type, you can choose between the NES, NES, NES. I have it set to SNES right now, and I have one single game in there, a canoe game. And this is going to be pertinent to what I do today, as you will see. For right now, I'm going to change it to console type NES. Then I'm going to exit Hashi, and I tend to exit and reopen Hashi to get a proper read. And I completely took the games out of my games and games SNES folder so that there'd be no conflicts. I have them all backed up into this backup folder where I have such things as my configuration, my dump, my folder images, just anything I don't want to have a chance of being messed up if I make a mistake. So I'm going into my games folder and I'm just going to copy a subset of games here. And these are from the NES Classic. I'm going to convert them so they run on the SNES Classic. I did a longer version video of this. This is still going to be a fairly long video, but the method of doing it is going to be shorter, as you will see. So I'm going back. And I'm going to copy these into both my games folder. And my games SNES folder. And then I'm going to reopen Hashi. Right now I have the designation for console type NES. I'm looking at the command line here. And there's a differential between NES Classic and SNES Classic. That differential is specifically this NES catchy catchy with a forward slash. If you delete that, it'll make this game work on the SNES Classic as long as it is in the SNES folder. So anyways, I'm going to switch over to the SNES console type, and I'm going to do a manual edit right here. I'm going to pretty much delete NES Catchy Catchy with one single forward slash. Now I can flash this game, and it'll work perfectly fine on the SNES Classic, given I had the proper core and RetroArch installed, of course. But say you have several hundred to several thousand games, and you, you don't want to have to manually do this for everyone. I'm going to use a tried and true method that I've been using for decades now and uh, Pilgrim 2 Hyper Hyperion has basically uh, collaborated with me a little bit on this and having a better streamlined method for this. And I'm going to show you how this is done. I have this nifty little program called Find and Replace. I have it pointed directly to my games SNES folder and the part that I need to remove is this NES forward slash catchy catchy. So it's going to search through the entire directory and any instance of NES Catchy Catchy, it's going to delete because I have find and I'm going to replace it with a blank. So I'm going to replace right now. Now that that's all done, I'm going to look at these command lines. They still see NES Catchy Catchy on there, but I'm going to exit and reopen Hatchy. Now it's completely removed, so pretty much every one of these games works on the SNES Classic. Nice and nifty. If I want to do it in reverse, 
I'm going to do the exact same thing in reverse. I'm going to just uh, look at this command line here and to find and replace. And I'm going to go to the part where it says games. And this is from converting NES Classic to SNES Classic. I'm saying reverting back from SNES Classic to NES Classic. I apologize. I'm going to type in games, forward slash, and I'm going to replace that with games, forward slash, NES, forward slash, catchy catchy. And then one more forward slash. And then I'm just going to find and replace those, make sure we do it right. And then I'm going to exit and reopen. And look at the command line to make sure I did it correctly. And I have my games NES catchy catchy, so these will work on the NES Classic. So that's as simple as it is. And I'm going to pretty much use this method, and I'm going to convert my entire set right now. I'm going to go to that directory. And I already have a backup of the backup folder, so this isn't going to be a big deal. So I'm going to the backup, backup, and my games folder. And I'm going to pretty much do the exact same thing I did. This is the entire NES catchy catchy set. And I'm going to just remove this entire thing. Completely delete it. Just like so. And it's going to get in a file list. And it's going to pretty much take about 10 to 15 minutes to do all 10,000 games plus that I have. That's as simple as it is.